Chapter 4, We Agnostics In the preceding chapters, you've learned something of alcoholism. We hope we've made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. If, when you honestly want to, you find you cannot quit entirely, or if, when drinking, you have little control over the amount you take, you're probably alcoholic. If that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. Just wanted to pass this on. Here's here's three books I read every morning. First one is 24 Hours a Day. Second one is God Calling. And the third one is Daily Reflections. Taking this book down from our shelf, we turn to the page which contains the twelve steps. Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask if we have omitted anything, for we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work solid so far? Are the stones properly in place? Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? If we can answer to our satisfaction, we then look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing. When ready, we say something like this. My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have then completed step seven. We have a list of all persons we have harmed and to whom we are willing to make amends. We made it when we took inventory. We subjected ourselves to a drastic self-appraisal. Now we go out to our fellows and repair the damage done in the past. We attempt to sweep away the debris which has accumulated out of our effort to live on self-will and run the show ourselves. If we haven't the will to do this, we ask until it comes. Remember, it was agreed at the beginning we would go to any lengths for victory over alcohol. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others, of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. Grapevine has a uh, feature where you can get a daily email 
from the AA Grapevine website, a quote of the day. Also, they have a, uh, they run, every once in a while, they run a seven-day trial on the uh, Grapevine. And what's nice about it is that they have the audio version of the Grapevine. And you can download the files and listen to the audio version and basically it's just a seven-day trial but uh, yeah it's a great resource uh, a grapevine was called and, and it's it's um, basically a meeting in print a's forgotten beginning the alcoholics anonymous beginners classes studying the steps is not the same as taking the steps in the beginners classes you take the steps the big book says, here are the steps we took not here are the steps we read and talked about. The AA pioneers proved that action, not knowledge, produced the spiritual awakening that resulted in recovery from alcoholism. On page 88, the authors of the big book wrote, it works it really does. We alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. But this is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. Let go absolutely. After failure on my part to dry up any drunks, Dr. Silkworth reminded me of Professor William James's observation that truly transforming Spiritual experiences are nearly always founded on calamity and collapse. Stop preaching at them, Dr. Silkworth said, and give them the hard medical facts first. This may soften them up a depth so that they will be willing to do anything to get well. Then they may accept those spiritual ideas of yours, and even a higher power. AA comes of AGE, pages 13. More than comfort. When I am feeling depressed, I repeat to myself statements such as these, pain is the touchstone of progress. Fear no evil. This too, will pass. This experience can be turned to, benefit. These fragments of prayer bring far more than mere comfort. They keep, me on the track of right acceptance. They break up my compulsive, themes of guilt, depression, rebellion, and pride. And sometimes they, endow me with the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom, to know the difference. Grapevine, March 1962. Selfish? I can see why you are disturbed to hear some AA speakers say, AA is a selfish program. The word selfish ordinarily implies that one is acquisitive, demanding, and thoughtless of the welfare of others. Of course, the AA way of life does not at all imply such undesirable traits. What do these speakers mean? Well, any theologian will tell you that the salvation of his own soul is the highest vocation that a man can have. Without salvation, however we may define this, he will have little or nothing. For us if AA, there is even more urgency. If we cannot or will not achieve sobriety, then we become truly lost, right in the here and now. We are of no value to anyone, including ourselves, until we find salvation from alcohol. Therefore, our own recovery and spiritual growth have to come first, a right and necessary kind of self-concern. Letter, 1966 Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers, Chapter 5 The Alcoholic and the Oxford Group In addition to the four absolutes, the Oxford Groupers had the five C's and the five procedures. The C's were confidence, confession, conviction, conversion, and continuance, while the procedures were given to God. Listen to God's direction. Check guidance. Restitution. 
and sharing for witness and for confession. There were slogans as well, study men, not books. Win your argument, lose your man. Give news, not views. In addition, a member recalled how groupers would go around smiling enthusiastically and asking each other, are you maximum? Undisputed leader, as well as founder, of the Oxford Group Movement, Frank Buckman was a Lutheran minister from Pennsylvania, who did not drink or smoke. We believe, and so suggested a few years ago, that the action of alcohol on these chronic alcoholics is a manifestation of an allergy, that the phenomenon of craving is limited to this class and never occurs in the average temperate drinker. So, let's turn that into a question. Did you experience a craving for alcohol when you put alcohol in your body? Now, notice he says, and never occurs in the average temperate drinker. So, let's say... Out of ten times that I drink, I do not experience craving eight times. Am I an alcoholic? According to Dr. Silkworth, I am. You know why? Because he said it never. He doesn't say rarely. He doesn't say seldom. He says never occurs in the average temperate drinker. You see what separates me from the non-alcoholic? has nothing to do with how many times I've been to jail has nothing to do with that. It has to do with one thing and only one thing. It's called the phenomenon of craving. I've had the opportunity of going out for business dinners with colleagues who drink and sitting there and watching them drink and they'll have one or two by the time they get the second drink they push it away and they say something like I better stop, I'm starting to feel it. Well, let's go then. Come on. Let's get it on. <laughs> I cannot relate to that. I've been asked that question multiple times through the years by, by colleagues. to say, well, I don't understand it. What separates you from me? I don't have to go into this big old diatribe about, you know, what I experienced in the 12 years and so on and so forth. And I found a sponsor who had big books of writing and blah, 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 blah. I don't have to go into that. I tell them what the phenomenon of craving. What do you mean? I put alcohol in my body, I crave more alcohol, and I can't stop. That's how I know that I'm an alcoholic. Chapter 4, We Agnostics. In the preceding chapters, you have learned something of alcoholism. We hope we have made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. If, when you honestly want to, you find you cannot quit entirely, or if, when drinking, you have little control over the amount you take, you are probably alcoholic. If that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. Don't go into your mind alone. It's not a safe neighborhood. Let go and let God. Live and let live. Halt. Don't get too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Pass it on. Alcoholics, Anonymous The story of how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism Check out this new site I found. It's called intherooms.com. You can register for free, and basically there's online video meetings every two hours. There's different different fellowships you can join. Uh, mine is Alcoholics Anonymous, so it's pretty cool. Online video meetings, AA meetings online with your webcam and audio you don't have to show yourself if you don't want but 
I thought it was pretty cool, so I wanted to pass it on. Intherooms.com. Check it out. I go to meetings and I see those 12 promises up on the wall. And those statements give me a lot of hope. Do, do they give you hope? Yeah, me too. You know, I'm going to be able to handle situations which used to baffle me and so on and so forth. So a promise is basically any statement that gives you hope. Because that's what those statements are. They're statements of hope. Turn to the cover page of the book. The cover page where the very first thing on it is Alcoholics Anonymous. This is what it looks like. Notice what the author say on this page. Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism. Does that give you hope? That gives me hope too. What I learned as a result of my sponsor taking me through this list of instructions in this book is I discovered that all the steps have promises with the exception of step one. The promises are not located on page 83 and 84. Those are called the nine step promises and we'll be talking about those in the third session. So anytime you go through the book and you find a statement that gives you hope, that's a promise. We're going to open our meeting with uh, a quiet time and follow it with the set aside prayer. God, please help me set aside everything I think I know about myself, the 12 steps, the big book, the meetings, my disease, and you, God, so I may have an open mind and a new experience with all these things. Please let me see the truth. Amen. Thank you.